Okay, uh, hello everyone. And uh, today's course, probably the the last course in this year, okay, <laughs> in this year. So yeah, tomorrow we'll be having a, a new year tonight, okay. So yeah, probably I'm saying the happy new year. <laughs> so, uh, but still we have still some work on next week, okay. Uh, Next Tuesday will be, we have a quiz and maybe I'll give you uh, several uh, sessions before the quiz. The quiz maybe just uh, three, three to four questions, maybe four questions. And maybe the time limit for the quiz is maybe around, uh, maybe one hour, uh, around, around one hour. Okay. And the Thursday class, okay, uh, we still have, or you don't want it. it I think it's, it's up to you. Uh, but I think we can do it online class, okay? Because from around from Thursday or Friday, we already have the final exam week, right? So I think it's better to have our class in uh, online class, okay, for Thursday. And I offer you the, so let me maybe write here. Um, so next January, January 4, okay, January 4. This will be quiz, right? Uh, chapter six, it's around one hour. So one hour class and quiz for chapter six. And January 6, uh, I'm offering this an online class. And I offer you one more class, online class, if you want to take. It's on 11. So this class probably will be uh, focused more on the review, okay, review. So final exam. We will have chapter five, chapter six, and chapter seven. Actually, if we can have uh, learning chapter eight in between, I'm thinking to include chapter eight in the final exam. But I think for now, we can focus just the three chapters. Okay. But uh, the chapter, okay, because in learning the integral, you need to also have some background or knowledge in derivative, right? So indirectly, your final exam is actually all chapters. But the focus questions will be five, six, seven. But to answer the question in five, six, seven, you need to know the basic on from the derivative. Okay. Okay. So final exam, and, and for the chapter eight, I will give you additional video. Okay, additional video. Supplementary for you, okay? Chapter eight, only two sections we will, uh, I will include in the video. This is uh, the arc length and the surface area. Okay. And this week I also uh, will be going so I'll upload additional video regarding the chapter seven for several cases, And next week, I will also upload uh, another video, hopefully, if um, if our review still need some improvement, then I will add some uh, video, okay? So that will be uh, our uh, class, okay, until uh, January 11th. 
so for the online class for January 6 and 11, this is an optional class, okay? Uh, because basically these two class is uh, reviewing uh, for your preparation for final exam. So that will be the uh, the schedule for our class. Okay. okay, you can scan the QR code if you are just come. Okay, you can scan. And also the answer key for uh, midterm and also the make up midterm, I will also upload, I think this week, okay. And hopefully on on Tuesday, I can deliver, if you uh, join the make, make up midterm, I can deliver you the result and you, you will know the result you know, on Tuesday when we have a quiz. So please don't forget uh, next Tuesday, please come to the class. Okay? Uh, we will have a chapter six quiz, okay? Okay, I think we can start the course. Okay, let's start with the feedback time, okay? So the first question is about this, okay? Uh, there is a statement that the trigonometric substitutions using x equal five sine theta. If we are using five sine theta, we are not going anywhere, right? We are stuck here. And I think it's better to check with the tangent, right? Because we can solve and take it into a second, right? So x equal five theta, sine theta will not solve the question. So it's it's false statement. So it's false, okay? Okay, next question is this, uh, we have some trigonometry, sine theta, cotangent theta over secant theta. So here's is, uh, so I'll, I, I'm trying to solve algebraically. So getting the cos squared theta. And remember whenever you have cos squared or even sine squared, remember to, 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 to exchange the form to double angle, okay? Change to double angle. That is cos squared is equal half cos two theta plus one, okay? By doing so, I think it's better way to integrate. Okay? You can integrate easily each one of them. So you can integrate half become half theta integrate cos two theta become sine two theta over two and the multiple by two, which become four. And then we can plug in pi over three and pi over six. And we get uh, pi over 12. So the answer will be one over 12. Okay, so the, the important one is this uh, trigonometric, okay? trigonometric identity okay? in our, our case here. Okay, the last one is you have integrations from zero to two, uh, dt over square root of four plus t squared, okay? Now, the, the key important here is if you have four, it's a constant, right? And you have a variable, you have a plus variable, we can always relate to the tangent, okay? Because we can exchange the square root and we can have a secant, right? And then we exchange the t to two tangent theta. 
we know the DT of four, this is DT ten. and we know the T squared is 14 squared theta. We exchange that to our equations. We got two secant theta and we solve secant theta. And we solve secant theta and we know that secant theta is ln uh, secant theta plus tangent theta. The next step will be put the pi over four and we get that the answer will be square root of two plus one, uh, ln square root of two plus one. Okay, I think uh, I think most of you majority got correct answer. Okay. Okay. Now to start our course, uh, let me just give you an example. Okay, from the improper integral we discussed last uh, Tuesday. So let me just write the questions. Okay. <clears throat> okay, because we know that we are in the improper integral. Okay. So this integration will be improper. And on 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 some x, the functions will be discontinued, right? Will be discontinued. So I think if we plug in zero, that will be discontinued, right? If we check zero inside the function, right? Okay. Uh, at x, uh, or maybe right first uh, left f of x is e at x equals zero, f is undefined. You can write. Or if you want, you can directly write down the uh, the limit because when x is zero, it will be undefined. So uh, limit from the right as uh, the left, right? Because it has negative one. So we can say as t approaching zero from the left. We can have uh, integrations negative one e one over x, or let me just write the whole thing first. Okay. Okay. Uh, the improper integral. We are just looking at using the limit, right? But the rest of the questions, we will, we need some techniques of integration that we have learned also. Okay. So my idea is uh, you can write down this integral in separate layers and try to work that out. And later, when we have the results, we can plug into here. And we can use the interval, negative 1 to t, and then evaluate the last one, evaluate the limit. Okay, so so there is at least three steps in in solving this problem. Okay, uh, you can still, if you want to directly write in terms of limit, you can write limit and then you try to solve this in in one uh, direction. But uh, usually my suggestion is you can take out this integral and solve the integral first and later put it back to the the limit. Okay, let me let's write first uh, our integrations. Okay, so let's have just 
an indefinite integral first. Okay. Evaluate this. Okay, what, what will happen? What do we do first to solve? Any idea to solve this? Okay. I think if you look here, one over x, okay. If you look here, this is x cubed. If we think, maybe if we can separate the x cube become x and x squared, okay? And maybe, is there any relation one over x with the one over x squared? Derivative, right? The derivative, right? So probably that will be one way to see, to see the uh, pattern. So we can try to write down one over x and then e one over x and then one over x squared dx. Okay. So we can try to break down this first. And then maybe we can try from, from here and try to derive this and become negative one over x squared uh, dx. And we have the dx is negative x squared du. So it's basically saying that we can cancel the x squared, this one, okay? And put the negative, right? Okay, so I think we can start doing that. So we can take the one over x as u, e with u, and then this will be having a negative, or oh, I forgot to write the negative, let me write negative at the front like that, and du. Now, as you remember, as I mentioned the first time about the integration by parts, this form is basically the easiest form, one of the easiest form that we can integrate using integration by parts. You see the variable, right? You see the uh, x or x squared, x cubed, and you see another element is e which is if you integrate or derive, it will be stay like that, yeah, right? So we can check this, we can, uh, we can derive this, right? We can integrate this and we can use integration by parts, okay? So let's, let's do some integration by parts. Because it's zero, so we can skip that part. So we will have minus u e u minus e u. Or in our case, uh, this will be e u minus U E U plus. Let's say plus C first. Okay. Okay. Now to solve this, we can exchange all the. Uh, maybe I will write here. Uh, limit as the approaching uh, zero from the negative. Let me write the whole thing from negative one to t e one over x x cube. We can write still, and we can exchange the endpoints. Let's write in terms of u. So if u is one over x, so when x is negative one, u is negative one, right? And when x is t then u will be one over t. So we can exchange with negative one and one over t. 
and we can write down this become negative u e u d u and write down the our solutions which is we still need to write the limit and then write down e u minus u e u and write down this is from uh, one of one, negative one to uh, one over t. And we can solve this limit. Okay, I think we can still can solve this. Let me exchange this with the negative. Okay, and let one over t is equal some some s. Okay. When t is getting zero, s is getting negative infinity, right? From the one over x uh, function. So limit. This will be S negative one, P e S. We can write our, uh, in terms of S and exchange all Okay, this part here, if we try to define all by S, or if we look here, it will be Infinity over infinity seems right. We can have some L'Hopital. We can have some L'Hopital. And this will be 1 over negative e negative x. And this is limit s. So this will be 0, right? This will be zero when you plug in here, right? So this will be equal negative two over E, and we can say that the, the limit is convergent. Okay, so yeah, I think 
like I said before, to solve a problem in the integral, you need at least the concept of limit and then L'Hopital, which includes the derivative, right? So indirectly, you need to learn every from every chapter. But the, the focus on the problem is the question in the integration. Okay? But to, to, to integrate the, or the technique that we need, it will include some derivatives, right? Yes, it's quite long for just a short question. It's just asking this, but we need to use really yeah, really long and a little bit complicated in the process. Okay. Okay, let's continue a little, a little bit. And the last section on the chapter seven and the improper integral is, we call it the comparison theorem. And this theorem is, uh, useful when you can compare some unknown integral with other integral that you know, whether it is converged or diverged, and then you can tell the unknown will be converged or diverged based on the other integral. Okay, let's start with the suppose uh, we have F and G, both are continuous function. Okay. The statement, first statement, let's take the F of X is greater or equal G of X, and this is greater or equal zero. For x uh, greater or equal a, a is a real number. So first, if uh, we have a set up of integrals from a to infinite of f of x dx, if we know that this is converged or convergent, 
than by the theorem, because we know that the f is greater than g, then this will also converge. This is the first statement. The second statement okay, is now we start with G. If G divergent, okay, then for sure then the F also divergent. Okay. So F greater than D, greater than zero. If the integral of F converge, because f is greater than g, of course, the integral of g will also converge. Okay? If g diverge, okay, g is smaller than f. Of course, f also diverge. But there are some, some things that uh, you need to be made sure. Okay? First, the statement of f greater than g, you need to Proof first. Okay? If you want to compare some unknown functions with other functions, you have to prove that this is true. Then you can go for the other statement. Okay. For example, if G is converged, how about F? Not necessarily converged, right? Because because G is smaller than F. Okay, let me try to give you some uh, how to use this theorem in a practical use. Okay, the question start with uh, is integral from one to infinity of x over x cubed plus one dx converge or diverges. So not, not necessary to find the exact answer if it's converged, what's the result. But this is just to state whether it's converged or diverged. Well, I think if you try to integrate directly, I think you can use partial fractions, right? You can use partial fractions. Or um, yeah, not necessary. Okay. But if you look here, what we can do to solve this is looking at the this x. Okay. We have x and x cube, okay? Now consider we have a function that is um, x and x cube. Or we can have um, a function 1 over x squared. We can consider this, okay? Okay, of course, if we take this one over x squared and compare with the uh, x, x cubed plus one, this will be greater, right? Okay, at least greater or equal because of 
the, the plus one here, right? Okay. You can try to prove that this will be resulting in this, right? Because of integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx converges from our initial vector, right? Then by comparison theorem, also converge. So the main idea here is to find or to identify what kind of functions that you can compare with. Okay. Okay, let me give you another example, maybe a few examples, maybe two or three, maybe two examples more. Okay, converse or divert. So, so the steps is probably the first one is to identify what kind of function that we can compare with. And if you're not sure, we need to find the, the results for the, the function that we want to compare. For example, if we're not sure one over x squared is conferred or that, maybe we can try to check that first. Meaning we need to take some time to calculate the integral. And then compare with the this function. Okay. And uh, probably one way to look at this function is maybe we can just separate this square root of x. So we have one over square root of x. And we need to know what kind of results from this integration, whether it's it's converge or diverge. So first we can consider this. Okay. okay, if you remember, we already have some discussion about this. Okay. So P greater one is converge, right? P less equal one, this will be diverge. And we know that our power is half, which means less than one. So this integral should be diverged, 
Okay, should be deferred. And we can try to take into our uh, comparison. At least from here, because of the sign, and the maximum of sign will be a one, right? So probably this will have a, at least two, right? So of course this will be greater, and okay? this will be greater. And because this already diverged, and this will be also diverged, okay? Can write uh, because of this uh, diverge because diverge then this result. Yes. Yeah, we need to check. We have to, to solve this and try to figure out whether this is greater or less. Probably, probably, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, sometimes for the comparison, this will be uh, the, the the main problem, finding the the uh, good functions to compare and prove whether it is greater or less. And sometimes if you did some wrong in the process, uh, let's say it's become less, then you cannot have this conclusions, right? Maybe some in the middle process, you, you get a wrong idea, and then the, co the, co the conclusion will be also uh, different from the results, right? Okay. That 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 might 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 happen. Might happen. Okay. okay, let me go through maybe one more example. And we can have some review, especially maybe chapter six. Maybe one more example on this uh, improper a comparison theorem.
So let's check this uh, integral from zero to one of secant squared x over x squared of x dx, okay, whether it's converges or diverges. So you need to do some calculations at least to find the integral of from zero to one, one over x uh, squared of x dx. Where did it just converge or diverge, right? But in doing so, we can set up our integral uh, from zero to one, we can start with some random p. Okay, we can have p as any number. Okay. And similar to what we did in uh, previous lectures, if p equal one, okay, if p equal one, okay, we can imagine that this will be uh, from zero to one, one over x dx, and we know that because of the zero, if we put here, it will be a discontinuity, right? There will be a discontinuity on zero. So we can use a limit, right? We can use limit. So we can use limit. Now it's zero from, from the right, right? Because zero, one, go from the right, okay? So we can have zero, uh, D to one. Okay, let me solve this and we can have break later. Let me solve this first. One over x is ln. You can just write ln and then x. And this is from t to one. This will be the net. This is ln one minus ln t. Right? And we know that this will result uh, in a diverse, right? Because of ln zero, okay? We can write this will be a diverge or divergent, divergent result, okay? And we may need to check the other p, okay? We need to check the other p. Okay, I think we can have a five minutes break. Okay.
So tomorrow will you go to see the fireworks? No, not here. <laughs> Usually you go to the 101 or different area. Uh, too many, right? It's too crowded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not sure because we need to proof. We need to proof first. Okay. So will you go to see the fireworks? The one one or no? I think better to go to some, usually there are several place. When you sit down, you can see the one-on-one clearly. In, in the, in the soon yesterday. Yes, yes, I, I also tried several years ago. <laughs> I tried, yeah, yeah. It, but it depends on the clouds. Sometimes the cloud is too much. So if we just only see, uh, like a glimpse, not really clear. <laughs> yeah, there will be a lot of people, and after finish the, after finish, they will be like, one time I go there, and we need to walk from one one to, at least walk, and and basically uh, it will be faster if you have like bicycle, park your bicycle somewhere, and you can go ride it. Better home. Yeah. There are a lot of people like walking really like long, long, really long way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think I will just go nearby if we want, or maybe just take, yeah, take some place and see from higher place. Mm. Usually, if you go, you can go to the Sanyatsen. And yes, and there is a, like a park, and when you sit on the on the on the park, you will see clearly one on one. But there will be also many people, but not as much as the one on one. And you can bring like maybe some snacks, instant noodles. <laughs> you can make instant noodles and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yes. I think we can continue. Okay, now for the other P, we can just write down our limit. And we can just write one over X with power of P. And we just integrate as usual. This is minus p plus one, right? So one minus p, and this will be also one minus p, like that. Integrate it from t to one. Now we can write the limit. We can take, or we can also take, actually take outside the one over one minus p because that is a constant. And we can have one minus uh, t, one minus p. Uh, 
and we can write this in terms of p, p minus one like that. We rewrite in the fraction in in our fraction, and from here we can think on how p will behave. Like if p is greater than one and if p is less than one. If p is greater than one, then p minus one is greater than zero, which means it's positive. So one over p, p minus one, okay. This will be getting an infinite result or divergent, right? But when p is less than one, which means it's this p minus one is a negative result. Then when we have t p minus one, this will be resulting in zero. So we know that this will be convergent. So if we are looking back on our question here, okay, one over x squared of x, so we have from zero to one, one over x squared of x, the x. We can write this as one over x three over two the x right which means the p is greater than one right and when p is greater than one as we mentioned this will be a divergent And also, you may also, if you uh, choose to calculate this result, you can also do that. And it will be also the same result on divergent, right? If you want to integrate this 3 over 2. Okay? So I'll, I'm showing you the, the general uh, rules for from, uh, from 0 to 1. Okay? It's a little bit different from the last one that is from a constant to an infinity, right? Then uh, we can write down that second squared x over x squared of x, if we compare with this, this probably will have this, right? Because second can have two, right? It can have squared of two, it can be two, and it will be greater, right? Uh, if you check the pi over four, we'll have at least a, a greater, right? So because of this, because of this is divergent, then the integrations from zero to one of second squared x over x squared of x dx also Divergent, diverges by comparison theorem.
Okay. Uh, let's have some review. Okay. Um, I think I will focus maybe chapter six more because we will have quiz later. So probably next Tuesday we will have the quiz at the first hour. I think it'll be better. First hour quiz, and then first hour we can have some uh, some review and maybe some explanation about the quiz answer. Okay, okay let's let's start with. Uh, let me write the questions. Maybe two or three questions. Find the area of region bounded by Let me give you a few minutes, maybe four or five minutes to, to check the questions. Anyone find the result? Anyone find? No? Okay.
Uh, yes, Young An. Uh, correct, correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Okay, so probably this will be the area, right? This will be the area. And because of X should be in the positive, so uh, perhaps we have to find the intersections, which is we can find through sine X equal to X over pi. And we know from this um, equations, if we have x equal pi over two, then this will be results in and we can conclude that this point here should be our uh, Pi over two, so that we can write the integrations as from zero to pi over two of sine x minus two x over pi, and then the x. Now we can write this: integrate sine becomes negative cosine x minus uh, x squared over pi from zero to pi over two. This will be zero minus uh, pi squared over four. This become pi over four, right? And minus uh, zero is negative one, right? So we have one minus pi over four. Okay, probably one more question. Or maybe two questions. Okay, so this is the first one. Uh, the second one, uh, region bounded by y equal uh, e with power of negative x y equals zero, x equals zero, x equals one. Rotate it about y axis. Uh, volume of resulting solid Solid of revolution is okay. That's the second question.
Ini bisa kalau diputernya ke X, diputernya ke Y. Oh, bisa. Oh, bisa. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you are trying to square. Uh, this is rotated Y. This can if you rotate X, right? Yeah. yeah. So for this question, you may need some techniques from chapter seven, actually. Yes, correct. Good. Yeah, it, it, this is correct. Okay, so probably this will be the area that we are going to rotate. And we are going to rotate through Y axis. Okay. So we are going to rotate through Y axis. And if you look here, if we are going to use the, uh, the disk method, you will have at least you need to use dy, right? And you may need to write two area here, two, uh, two regions. The first one is just uh, this E. And you may, you may write in uh, ln if you want to write the dy, uh, ln, ln y, right? And the other one is the, this rectangle. And you can use the, the this method. If you are going to write in terms of dx and rotate through y, we can do that also using the, the shell method. Uh, you can choose which one you prefer. But for me personally, I would just go into the, uh, the shell. So you will have 
let's say this is uh, dx, okay? And we have the radius here. This is just x, and the height is e with power of negative x. So our volume. from 0 to 1 is 2 pi, or let me write 2 pi outside here, and x, e, with power of negative x, dx. Yeah. Now we need to, make to solve this through some integration like parts. So I write down x, minus one over E and then minus one over E minus zero minus one. So this will be results in one minus two over E. Okay, let me give you uh, one more question. Okay, one more question. Uh, region S under the curve. Fine. Volume. If region S uh, of the region S rotated about x axis, the second one is if rotated through uh, about y axis. So you have two questions, same region, okay, same region y equal cos squared x from 0 to pi over 2. The first one rotate about x axis, the second one rotate about y axis. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I think it's a small, small earthquake. I think if you graph from zero to pi over two, the graph will be a little bit similar to cosine x. The difference is just some point in between zero and pi over two will be uh, uh, much more uh, smaller because of the squared. Okay? But if you check zero, it's still one. If you check pi over two, it's still zero. So the end point is still one and zero, right? Okay. The end point is still one and zero, but it will be much more uh, maybe a little bit uh, lower than uh, the uh, original cosine x. Okay, so thank you to the drawing. If this is one, this is uh, pi over two. This is original cos x probably. Okay. And then maybe the our graph is like this, maybe. At least, okay. But we are just only looking at the endpoints from zero to, to pi over two. Uh, let's start with uh, maybe the x-axis. So this is x-axis rotated through x-axis. This is the rotations. Okay. Uh, my examples for this one and the previous one, uh, although we need to use some integration by parts in the chapter seven and some techniques also in, in chapter seven, uh, for your quiz, um, I will not include those techniques. So at least you understand how to get the disk method and the shell method and area between curves, at least that, that, that part. Okay? On this example, because we already learned the chapter seven, so I put some uh, technique of integration so that you can have some, some exercise also. Okay. okay, at least from here, if you are going to rotate this region, okay, rotate through uh, x-axis, I think we can just use the normal uh, this method, right? So we can have the dx, so we can have the x here, and just rotate and make uh, a this method. So we can use the uh, volume equal Pi, and then from zero to pi over two, the function is cos squared x, and then squared, okay, dx. And the problem now is to calculate this integral. Okay. Uh, cos squared, if you remember chapter seven in trigonometric integrals, Every time you see cos squared or sine squared, better to change to the double angle form, okay? So let's change first, okay? So change first the cos squared x. Let me write here, uh, cos two x is, or yeah, cos two x is two cos squared x minus one, or cos squared x is half cos 2x plus 1. Okay. 
Okay, so I can write my volume. It's half and it's square, it's become one over four. Or let me just write one over four and goes outside, pi over four. And then the rest is cos two x plus one and then squared. Now we may need some calculation, some uh, formula here to expand this quadratic uh, formula. So we will have cos squared 2x plus 2 cos 2x plus 1, right? Now, again, we have the cos squared. So we need to have another double form, 2, 4x. Okay? So we may need to have uh, one, uh, one plus cos 4x over two plus two cos 2x plus one and integral, okay? And I believe this will be easily to be integrated, right? Okay, uh, I leave that for you to to integrate those. Let's look at uh, if we rotate y axis. If we rotate y axis, you can also use the this method and change to dy. But in doing so, you need to have the cost inverse, right? The cost inverse because you need to exchange x and y, right? So my idea is we can just still use the x and use the shell instead. Okay, use the shell instead. Okay. So the first one you can use the this. The second one for y-axis we can use the shell method. So this will be the, the dx, this will be the r, this will be the high. So this is using the shell method, which is volume is equal to pi. This is from zero, pi over two. This R is X, right? So we can write X. And then the height is cos squared X. And then the X. And again, we are going to have double formula for cos squared. So X, and then this will be one plus cos 2x over 2 dx. Cancel 2 with other 2 outside. So we can have pi integral from pi, a 0 to pi over 2. This is x plus x cos 2x. And again, we have x plus 2x. We may need some integration by parts. So this is pi. This is x squared over 2. This is plus um, x sine 2x over 2. Minus, yeah, plus cos 2x over 4. I think you can just 
solve it, right? Try to find and solve. Okay, I think for today's class, there will be no feedback time. Okay? No feedback time. So I will end until this uh, review. Uh, we will have, remember next Tuesday, the first hour in our class will be quiz. And when we finish the quiz, and we can have some review, uh, either the quiz, we can review the quiz, and we can review for the chapter seven. Okay. You can review chapter seven and let's have more uh, practice and example. Okay. 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 I think that's for today's class. Okay. So yeah, for the online students, you can leave the Google Meet if you want. Okay. And see you next Tuesday in the new year. So happy new year.